Welcome, everyone, to the Next Best Picture podcast, where we are talking with Andrew Haig, the writer and director of All of Us Strangers. Andrew, thank you so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure. Good to be here. This pleasure is all mine. Trust me. <laughs> um, very, very um, happy to be talking with you. Um, this is one of, I think, my favorite films of the year so yeah. far, and it, it's having not known going in that it was based on a book i was somewhat surprised afterwards that it was n not only based on a book but one that um you then took uh, some as i understand it some big liberties with um in adapting it so i i'm curious was there an, an instant connection to this story that you knew you had to do it or did you have to have to think about it for a while before adapting it into the story that you wanted it to be yeah I had to definitely think about it I knew there was something really interesting in the story and you know in the original story it's a much more traditional ghost story a horror essentially but the, it still was a story about a guy who wasn't able to move on with his life looking back at his past and meeting his parents again so that central idea was like well, that's a really interesting one and I kind of feel like it should have been done millions of times before because it's such obviously a good idea who doesn't want to re-communicate with your parents whether they are alive or not actually I would say like we all want to reconnect with our younger selves and work out what that relationship was um but I didn't know how to sort of make it my own or how to make it feel like it really kind of reflected my thoughts on love and loneliness and loss and all of those things that the, the film explores um so it was a bit of a long process but then I kind of just threw myself into it and turned you know the story into what it is what it is now which is sort of less ghost story but still about what haunts us i suppose absolutely um and when you were you know when you're going through this novel and you're writing your version of it um what were you trying to get at in your telling of it that made you want to change the certain details from the novel yeah, it's it's so strange when you're writing because I don't I didn't necessarily go into this knowing even what I wanted it to be about. I just knew that I wanted to explore basically my understanding of uh, parental love on what it can be and what sometimes it is and what sometimes it isn't on romantic love and how parental love and romantic love are sort of intertwined with each other. You learn one from your experience with the other. Um, I definitely wanted to talk about queerness. I wanted to talk about, you know, my experience of growing up gay in the 80s in the UK. I wanted to explore ideas of family and memory and nostalgia and the truth beneath nostalgia about loss and grief and all of the so many things I sort of was interested in exploring. And then as I started working on it, it all sort of just sort of like, it took some time, just came together. To me, it becomes a film about trying to understand the importance of love, I suppose, or being known and being understood and understanding and caring for other people. That is the basis of love. Um, I think that's sort of what came out as I was delving into all of this stuff. Yeah, and and throughout the film, and this is something that is sort of, I think, become a, a signature of an Andrew Haig project, is the these intimate scenes. And when we say intimate, it's not just that they're taking place during a sex scene or post-coital. It's that they really get at that emotional intimacy and vulnerability that I think... It's certainly familiar to all the gay men I knew know in terms of how you know what this conversations we have after sex. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> um, and you know how how do you how do you go about achieving that film without it feeling, you know, awkward like we're seeing something that we shouldn't be seeing yeah it's so true and i love i mean i've always loved those conversations and I, maybe it is like my experience as a gay man i feel like when you know when you connect with someone 
you want to share your understanding of what you've been through, I guess, or your experience of the world. And you obviously, you know, when you meet someone new, especially you're, you're, you, you've got a shared history often without you even knowing it about being gay, about growing up gay. And I certainly know when I was in the nineties and meeting people very quickly, you'd be talking about these kind of things that have been discussed in the film. But even now, like I get together with my gay friends now, doesn't take much for us to be discussing those things that we wouldn't ever necessarily discuss when we're surrounded by lots of straight people. So I love those conversations, but I just think intimate conversations are what they, so much of our lives is based around those conversations, whether it be with a parent or a friend or a lover or a partner. And so I want to try and get to grips with them and try and understand them and try and understand what we're trying to do within those conversations and how we're trying to be understood and are we playing ourselves down? Are we making jokes? What what are what are we trying to reveal um, to the other person? And that, to me, is I feel like everything I do, I'm trying to understand all of that. Yeah, and I, it's so I don't know. I can't think off the top of my head anyway of any other filmmaker, certainly in the um, the English language that that presents intimacy in in this way that seems to like understand that it's not just about sexual intimacy but emotional intimacy. Um, why do you think that most films don't understand those two things working together as well as you do? It's a really interesting question. I don't know to be honest because to me it feels so obvious that we use sex as a way to enhance our emotional intimacy with someone, even if it's just a one night stand. It does not yes. have <laughs> yeah. We're doing it for a reason. We're not just doing it to have sex. Even if you think that maybe you're just doing it to have sex, there's always something else going yeah. on. And I think I'm just always intrigued by that as a concept. And, and also that I think maybe it's that people separate sex and love too much but they're all entwined with each other. It's all entwined. It's so, it's so complicated. Like the very fact that you can love your parent and you can love your partner. And actually it's a really, really similar type of love, but they're very, very different relationships. But when it comes down to it, what is the basis of that love? It's wanting to be comforted. It's wanting to comfort them. It's wanting to be understood. And that to me is the basis of love. Um, and we just find different ways of achieving that. Um, this film, the the cast that you've assembled for this film is in, incredible, um, and they're all fantastic jobs. But knowing that you have to get at these really uh, deep, intimate subjects and in these scenes that less, it's not like a couple lines. It's like these are full on scenes that are the heart of the story. Um, how do you go about casting the right chemistry in those roles? Yeah, it's really scary, to be honest, because you know that there's four people in this film, essentially. You know, well, there is only four, four people. Like, if it doesn't work, if they, if, they, if they can't pull it off, it doesn't work. And this is a very strange thing to make work anyway. You've got, a, you've got an adult looking older than his parents, but you have to believe that he's still their child and they're still his parents. So it's a very complicated thing. Um, and I just wanted people that really cared about the story we were telling. And all the four of the actors were really, they understood it, they loved it, they cared about it, they wanted to work with each other. Uh, Claire was desperate to play Andrew's dad and Jamie was desperate to work with Claire and all of them wanted to work. Paul was so desperate to work with Andrew and Andrew with Paul. So it was like a love fest from the beginning, which you need. <laughs> I don't think this yeah. would have worked otherwise. No. Um, it really wouldn't have done. So they were so committed and also, all of them threw themselves into it. And it was a pretty emotional shoot, actually, I think for everybody, because it was, it spoke to all of them for different reasons about their own lives. You know, whether they were a parent or a child, you know, Jamie and Claire were both parents. This is also about parenting, this film, as much as it is about being a child. And so there was so much going on. And, you know, sometimes we were like, Jesus Christ, everyone needs to stop crying. Can we please, we've got to go. We've got to like we can't be crying constantly. We've got to like manage the tears. So it was it was it was interesting. <laughs> did you did they have a lot of rehearsal time to sort of work on this, or what? Did it just that happened? Kind of happened. We definitely all met and we talked about stuff, and 
I spent time with Andrew and then I spent time with Andrew and Paul and Andrew spent time with Jamie and Claire and we tried to work on that relationship and but we didn't really go through the scenes too much prior to it we did a little bit and we worked out you know there's always scenes that you think are harder than others and you sort of go through them I did some screen script edits and worked out better ways to say things and um and then we just went for it it was a six-week shoot it wasn't too long and um but that you know they're all so experienced and they're so good that it sort of makes life so easy because when you've got good actors that know what they're doing and care about the material then you know it's 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 a fun thing to work on most of the time <laughs> indeed <laughs> um we we are coming up on the end of our time together but before we go i had to ask because i remember hearing uh at the new york film festival that uh, the house that serves as the childhood home in the film was your actual childhood home. Um, and uh, God, what what was that like? And why put yourself through that? I still ask myself why I put myself through it, because it was a strange thing. I think I wanted to be haunted by my own past as I made the film, I think is the truth of it. And I think I went into it thinking, do you know what? This is a story about someone going back home. And so for me to fully immerse myself in that, even in the script writing process, I wanted to do the same thing. And I knew that I wanted the film to be very specific to my experience, not entirely, but in lots of elements of the story. And so I wanted to be as honest as I could about things. And then so it made sense to shoot there. And it was weird. It's like, it was like going into a haunted house. It's like you remember like your past. I remember, you know, I'm shooting a scene in my mum and dad's old bed now with Claire and Jamie and Andrew in his pyjamas. And it was a weird experience. I think for everybody, actually, for the crew, it was like, this is weird. They felt like they're intruding on my memories. <laughs> I mean, that does that makes it even that makes it feel even more intimate, you know, knowing that. <laughs> Yeah, but I I do love that. I love, I want to be, I want the actors to understand me and where I come from and my life. And then I want them to open up about their life. So you join in the middle and then you share something. It's a bit like what you said before about an intimate conversation with someone you, you're in bed with. You're sharing the intimate truth about your lives or what you want to share anyway. And so I try and do that with all the actors I work with in order for us to get to some intimate space when we're working. Yeah, and it it comes across it comes across beautifully um uh the the last question um, before we go uh which i have to ask as a huge pet shop boys fan <laughs> um was was it always pet shop boys always on my mind as like the the main theme of this movie did you have any backups in case you couldn't get the rights it's always been the Petra Boys. I, you look like a Petra Boys fan. I kind of knew you'd be. <laughs> Whenever I go to a Petra Boys concert, it's like, oh yeah, yeah, we look a certain way. As Boys fans. Yeah, we do. <laughs> yeah, I love them. I've always loved them, and it was a song that I loved growing up, and I love lots of their music. It was, it was never a question. It was written into the script. We got the rights before we shot the film. Actually, the Petra Boys are seeing the film in a couple of weeks. We've got a screening for them. And annoyingly, I'm going to be in LA, so I'm not going to get to meet them. Which no. I'm devastated about, because I oh, desperately no. want to meet them. Desperately want to meet them. I'm hoping at some point I will meet them. Uh, but they're definitely heroes of mine, without a doubt. <laughs> it, it's, just, it's just fantastic. It, it's the perfect song choice for that. It's a beautiful way to end the film, to tie everything together. And I don't think I'll be able to hear it anymore without hearing Claire Foy whispering it I in know, my ear I like know. a lullaby and I'll cry. <laughs> um, so Andrew, hey, Andrew, thank you so much for joining us today and, and best of luck to you on whatever comes next. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thanks.